Hello and welcome to Into the Woods with Holly Wharton. This podcast has evolved over the five plus years since it first launched. From now on, I'm going to be talking about deepening your connection with yourself, taking inspired action, and really trusting yourself and your intuition. And also mindset, of course, but mindset of all kinds, not just business mindset. I think. Things are changing for me, as you may have noticed if you've been following me online or listening to this podcast, so anything goes here. I hope you stay along for the ride. Thank you so much for joining us today, and now let's get into this week's episode. Hello and welcome to the Into the Woods podcast, episode 279. This is your host, Holly Wharton, and I'm back with another solo episode. Today I'm going to talk about downtime. Do you get enough of it? Do you get any of it? So this is a topic that I've been thinking about for the last few days, and I brought it up in my Patreon group and felt like I needed to kind of go a little bit more in depth into it. It's something that's really important, and yet it's something that I feel really guilty about. I also brought this up this morning in my Master Gut group, and I was not the only person experiencing this kind of guilt and easiness around downtime and integration time. And so I thought that this might be useful to you. So let's get into it. Downtime. What is it? So this all started because I was in Avebury staying at the house last week. It was Thursday through Saturday. And spent a lot of time walking the land. And I collected one tree story for the book, but I was mostly just being outdoors and being at certain places. And there's one particular place where I just sat and kind of soaked up the energy. Swallowhead Spring, I was there for quite a while, longer than I usually go when I visit there. And I just felt like even more than walking on this trip, I really needed to just sit in certain places and just be there. So, well, not all, but most of my favorite spots, and just sat there. And I wasn't necessarily meditating. I wasn't necessarily doing any kind of energy work. It was like I felt like I just needed to kind of be in those places. And when I'm in Avebury and when I'm walking the land and when I'm going to these sacred sites, I feel like I'm working at an energetic level. I don't really understand what's going on. I don't know whether I'm downloading energy, receiving energy. I don't fully understand it, but I know I'm doing something because I'm always really hungry and I always really need meat, like beef, like really kind of high calorie, dense, grounding kind of food and lots of sleep to recover. So I know something's going on, but I don't consciously understand it. So anyway, so I was there doing the energy stuff that I don't understand. And then I got back on Saturday afternoon and did some work, didn't get much done. Sunday was just like personal day. That was very much kind of a um, lazy whatever I want to do day. And so I spent most of my time reading a couple of books and just relaxing. And then Monday and Tuesday, I got some work done in the mornings, but I also really felt like I needed to just spend some time with myself, like just be, read, relax, rest. And then yesterday, which was Tuesday, I started to feel really unsettled. And I get this sensation every once in a while. I haven't really been able to pinpoint. I know it usually happens at a certain point in my cycle, but not always and not necessarily at that point. So... In summary, I feel like I'm not being 100% clear here. So for the first couple of days, I felt like I was kind of integrating the energy that I had received when I was in Avebury. And then yesterday with that unsettled feeling, I don't know whether I was still integrating stuff or what was going on, but it got to the point where I didn't want to read, didn't want to take a bath, didn't want to do anything. Didn't want to meditate. I didn't want to listen to a guided journey. I didn't want to do anything. So I thought, well, I'm just going to watch some Netflix. And so I did. And that kind of kept my mind busy and distracted, which I think is a really important part, allowing this integration to happen. So going back to my original question, downtime, integration time, what is it? So I think there are different ways of working, of kind of looking at this and working out what this is for you. 
So downtime could simply be like rest and relaxation time that you need so you don't get burnt out. We all need it. We all need personal time. We all need self-care. We all need those kind of lazy, relaxing days. But I think what I'm talking about here is something that's a little bit more. So for those of us who do a lot of inner work, a lot of mindset work, a lot of energy work, we need time to integrate all that work. And I've talked before on this podcast about how I will go through kind of natural ebbs and flows when I do this work with myself. So for a couple of days or a couple of weeks or X amount of time, I'll do lots of mindset work. Like I'll do lots of energy work. I will do lots of inner work with myself. And then I'll just kind of naturally stop for a while. And that could be a few days. It could be a few weeks. It could be a month. And I just naturally don't do anything. I don't feel drawn to do anything. I don't even think about it. And to me, that is my system just naturally allowing itself time to integrate all the work that I've done in the same way that I needed some time to integrate all of the energy work that I was doing from Avebury. So that's what I mean when I talk about downtime or integration time. We naturally need this integration time for all the inner work that we do, whether you realize you're doing it or not. We also need downtime to avoid burnout. This really helps us to slow down, take care of ourselves, and just be. So how do you know when you need downtime? Like, what are the signs? So for me, it's just kind of like the sense of like feeling lazy. And that's why I often call this my lazy time. And I know that's not the best word for it because it does indicate the sense of guilt that I often have with downtime or integration time. But there you have it. I just often feel lazy. It's like, can't focus, can't get anything done. Sometimes it takes me a while to identify that. And so I'll sit in front of my computer and I'll just be like browsing the internet or playing words with friends on my phone, doing stuff that is not my normal work. It's not writing. It's not answering emails. It's not working on my website. It's not creating content. It's nothing productive, except it kind of is. Because what it does is it keeps my conscious mind occupied so that this integration stuff can happen in the background. Now, I've encountered this concept a lot over the years. My business coach, Lisa Wechtenheiser, who also does readings and like all kinds of powerful work and is really good at helping you have deep, unwavering trust in yourself. That's her thing. And that's what she's really helped me with in addition to business stuff. But she would always say that when she's playing, I think it was Candy Crush she used to play, one of those games. She always used to say that she knows that when she's playing Candy Crush or whatever game it was that she was playing, that it was her integration time, that it was time for her to get the downloads, integrate the work that she'd done, have stuff happening in the background that wouldn't necessarily happen during the day. It was like she needed to occupy her conscious mind so that this stuff could happen kind of underneath. And it's a concept that I've also heard from my former spiritual teacher who would often say, like at gatherings, he would sit and tell stories and tell jokes. And he would often say that that's not what he was there for, that while we were sitting there laughing at his jokes and listening to his stories, and kind of being inspired by him, he was like doing energetic stuff in the background and kind of slipping stuff into our minds, <laughs> like good stuff, because our conscious minds were occupied with the story or the joke or whatever. So I think this is a really important concept to be aware of, because I think it's so easy for us to think, oh, well, I'm playing Scrabble on my phone, or I'm watching Netflix, and it's, I'm being lazy. And sometimes it is avoidance, and sometimes it is what we do to waste time or to procrastinate. That's not what I'm talking about here. And you will know. Like, if you're in touch with yourself, you will know if you're doing this stuff to procrastinate, to avoid something that you want to do or need to do or should be doing, or if it's just that you need downtime. You will know. You will know. And I'm very much aware of the fact that most of the people in my life are going to be, I mean, yes, yeah, sometimes we self-sabotage, but also we can be very focused and we can work quite hard, both with the inner work, the outer work, the practical work. And we may not find it easy to give ourselves permission to be lazy or have this downtime or integration time. And it's so, so important. So give yourself permission 
to have this downtime and do whatever mindset work you need to do to make it happen. So like, I have not done this yet, but I'm going to make a mental note right now to do some belief statements around giving myself permission to have downtime. So it could be something as simple as I give myself permission to have downtime or integration time. It's safe and appropriate for me to have integration time. It's safe and appropriate to give myself time to be lazy. Whatever statements you want to create or however it is that you do mindset work. But those are kind of the general concepts. Like do the subconscious work that you need to do to give yourself permission to have this integration time. And I'm very much aware that by telling you or suggesting that you do some mindset work, that's given your system more stuff to have to integrate. But that's fine. For me, this is kind of a never-ending process of growing, identifying how I want to grow, and changing my mindset so that I can achieve those things and become those things and experience those things and then have the integration time, give myself the integration time to integrate that stuff. So I hope that kind of makes sense. So what to do when you have this weird feeling like you can't focus and you know you're not procrastinating and you need the downtime or the integration time? So again, you'll know in the gut level whether you're just procrastinating or whether you need this integration time. And part of the way to know that is just your intuition, your gut feeling. But the practical way is also, have you done very much like energy work or mindset work or anything like that lately? Like it was clear to me that I needed integration time because I just spent three days in a place where I know deep energetic stuff happens. So that was obvious to me. So what to do? Whatever it is that keeps your conscious mind occupied, whatever it is that you feel drawn to do. And I suggest that you get out your journal and make a list of things that you can do in your integration time. Now, I'm going to read out a list of ideas. Some of these things are going to appeal to you. Some of these things aren't going to appeal to you. If they don't appeal to you, don't do them. There may be days when you need integration time and some things that normally give you that sense of downtime or integration or relaxation will appeal and sometimes they won't. You're going to need different things different days. So it's good to have a list so that you can just kind of pick and choose from that list and say, oh, this is what I need today. So it could be Netflix. It could be watching films. It could be watching series. It could be binge watching something. Could be reading, especially fiction, because fiction helps take your mind off practical stuff and learning stuff. And it takes your mind into a world that is not like your world. So I think reading fiction especially can be really useful. Exercise. Exercise, especially repetitive stuff like exercises that you have to count, like whether it's like abs or squats or burpees or running. Running can really put me into a meditative state. So can walking. So any kind of exercise that kind of either occupies your mind because you're counting something that you're doing or that just puts your mind into that meditative state can be good and can give you that integrative time. You could listen to an entertaining podcast. And this is kind of like the fiction books versus nonfiction books. So maybe listen to a podcast that's not necessarily learning, but that's maybe comedy or something that's entertaining rather than learning. However, you might find that listening to a learning podcast is good because it keeps your mind occupied and this stuff can happen in the background. I don't know. Do what works for you. You could take a bath. You could take a bath with a book. You could take a bath without a book. You could take a bath with candles. Do what works for you. Any kind of self-care is good. Another thing that I was doing these last couple of days was baths, but also like exfoliating and doing like facial masks and that kind of thing. That kind of thing also really felt good as I was kind of having my downtime integration time. So it was like Sunday especially, it was like combination kind of spa time, like home spa time, and reading. So do what works for you. You could meditate. You could listen to a guided meditation. You could go for a walk. You could play games like Scrabble on your phone is good or Candy Crush if you do that or like solitaire, like stuff that distracts your conscious mind so that the energetic stuff can integrate. And if you thought of anything else as I was reading off that list, write it down. This is not an exhaustive list. There will be other things. Gardening. Gardening's good. 
Gardening's really lovely because you're really focused on what you're doing. So any kind of task, cooking, cooking is good. So any kind of task like that where you're really focused on what you're doing means that this integration stuff can kind of go on in the background. And where to go when you're doing this. So this could be wherever you want. It could be go outdoors, go indoors. When I'm feeling this, I feel like I really need to avoid my office. It's like allergic to my office. I just can't be in that space where I do work. So sometimes I'll go for a little walk. Sometimes I'll go downstairs and sit in my chair with my cats. I generally need to get out of my normal working environment. So go wherever you need to go. If you're cooking, obviously you're going to be in your kitchen. If you're taking a bath, you're going to be in the bathroom. Like some things are obvious. But get a feel for what you need. Do you need to be outdoors? Do you need to be indoors? And just feel into that and do it. The last few days have been really cold, so I really haven't felt like going out much. I've really felt like being sitting with the space heater and even my hot water bottle. (laughs) I've been filling up with hot water during the day and just sitting with it in my lap as I read, which has also been really nice because that means that my cats like it because it's warm, so they'll often sit in my lap. And that's just a really lovely experience for me. I really like sitting in my green chair downstairs with everything warm and my cat purring in my lap. It's very much kind of a self-care thing for me. And it really helps me in those integration times. So, you know, do what's right for you. Go where you need to go. And also, if you are a woman, pay attention to where you are in your cycle. Because you might be in one of those weeks where you naturally feel like you're drawn to go within rather than to go without. So like I said, I know that there are certain points in my cycle where I feel like this. And those are generally the last week as I'm approaching the bleed and then during the bleed. So check where you are in your cycle. I know I'm in week four. And so it's also kind of natural for me to have what I call my lazy days where I want to kind of just go within my little cave and not do work, but more kind of inner stuff. And that also is good for stuff like this podcast because it helps me to be more reflective on what's going on on the inside so I can share that with you. But I wouldn't necessarily feel drawn to like doing client calls on these days. So I hope that all makes sense. And I hope you find this interesting and useful. And I hope that you will use this as an opportunity to give yourself permission to have downtime, to have integration time, and to trust that you will know when it is that you're procrastinating and when it is that this is integration time that you need. If you have any questions, please let me know. You can drop me a line. Let me know what your questions are. Let me know what you thought of all this. My email is holly at hollywharton.com. Or you can join the community on Patreon. Go to patreon.com forward slash Holly Wharton and join me there. Like I said, I first mentioned this in the Patreon and I'm often sharing little things that I think are useful to the group in addition to the mindset work and energy work that I'm doing for people in there. So if you're interested, membership starts at just $1 a month and you get exclusive access to stuff that I don't do anywhere else, including special offers for discounted one-to-one sessions, and special packages for services that I won't be offering anywhere else. I just put up a brand new package at a very discounted rate, and people are starting to snap that up. And I did the first session today, and it was absolutely fantastic. So I look forward to doing more of those. So that is all for now. Thank you so much for listening. And if you enjoyed this episode, please let me know. And you can also leave a quick review on Apple Podcasts. It would mean the world to me. Next week's episode, I hope, will be one with the fabulous Joe Casey. We started recording today and then had a little bit of a interruption. So we will pick up recording hopefully next week, which means that I should be able to have the episode for you next week. If not, it will be me again. And then Joanna Hannon will be back in a couple of weeks. So that is all for now. Thank you, thank you, thank you for listening. Remember to visit hollywharton.com forward slash 279 for the show notes on this episode. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for listening to Into the Woods with Holly Wharton. You can find more information about today's episode, including links for topics that were discussed at hollywharton.com. That's H-O-L-L-Y-W-O-R-T-O-N.com. 
If you'd like to connect with other listeners and get support on your journey, I would love for you to join my private community on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Holly Wharton. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com forward slash Holly Wharton. Thank you so much for listening, and I look forward to seeing you next week.